I think too, like, I love what you said, just if I can just sort of go back, how do we metabolize pain, right? Or how do we metabolize the things that we've been through into something when like the plan just got thrown fully out the door? And I think your answer, like you just sort of telling that story and like that, that piece that she made was really just for herself, I think is really kind of where you just have to get to. And I think anything else is just sort of bullshit. Anything where you're like, well, I just have to produce so that other people see it just like isn't enough to run on. Like when you run into these scenarios, like it's like hitting a brick wall where you're like, I just actually don't care what people need or think about me. Like I actually have to do this my art myself for myself. I used to always say I was really big in the spoken word poetry scene. Like I just, I used to go all the time here in Denver. And I always tell people that you can tell the difference between a poet who said something because they think it was something that was going to get a lot of like votes or whatever. And the person who got up to say something because it literally had to come out of them to save their life. I think my challenge more has been, you know, you were saying like the the peaks and valleys of the sort of death and, and grief versus um, joy and bliss and ecstasy and aliveness and all those things being two sides of the same coin sort of. Mm -hmm. Those are actually like relatively easy to experience in my world. I have a harder time in the middle. I read a lot of Gabor Mate's work over the past year and in The Myth of Normal where he talks about how depression isn't a lack of feeling it's actually an excess of feeling so your body sort of shuts off because you actually just like don't have the capacity to metabolize or process everything that's happening through you all the feeling that's sort of pumping through you and i think that's sort of the extended state of where i've been and that's just real like i just that's the part where i think i feel zero bs at the moment like i can't give great language around grief and death versus aliveness and bliss like i have a lot more of just like I don't know, like I wake up every day and I do a job for Carrie. That's my daily income. And the best I know how to do is just to continue to be in the fucking uncomfortable soup that is zero answers. Like no high peaks, no low lows, just like living a real boring everyday life. And that's sort of what life feels like right now. My heroes in the creative world are people like Krista Tippett, who literally have done a podcast on being for... 20 plus years and so it's hard not to look at those as like the model of success like the way you get to fame the way you get to like international acclaim the way you get to have the conversations you want to have and be in the rooms that you want to be in is to do something you know it's very like war of art just like show up every day do the work sit down at the table write the thing and I just like I have zero capacity for that at the moment I don't know what it is but like it's just like it's outside of my capability and I'm just existing in sort of what feels like eternal now, which is like, what do you have today? And the best I can do is offer connection, like to the people around me or the people that I feel connection with and the land I live on and all of those things, like daily walks really <laughs> are like my biggest spiritual act at the moment. So there's nothing like grandiose going on over here. And I think getting comfortable with that is really kind of the like no BS place maybe you get to sort of later in adulthood.